Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for a day we've never seen before. Heavenly Father, thank you, Heavenly Father, for your son, Jesus, the administrator, the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Building the Church of Christ is the title that I use. However, there were several messages that have helped me to increase my prayer life. Prophetic prayer over the geographic realm, prayer over America and our world, the Holy Spirit, inner witness and teacher, prayer watches, and building the church of Christ. Hallelujah. Prayer is a key for our lives. Matthew 16th chapter, the 18th verse. And I will tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Thank you, Lord. Also, there was another verse. Now, I have several verses, but due to time, I'm not going to read all of them, but this next one I will. Matthew 16th chapter, 19th verse. I will give you uh, your the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth, it will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, it will be loosed in heaven. Let's me know that it's already been taken care of in heaven. I have to do my part here on earth. Thank you, Lord. Genesis, the first chapter, the 26th verse. Um, how Jesus built his church, the kingdom of God. Genesis, the first chapter, the 26th verse. It lets me know that um, it, God was talking to the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit and said, let us make an image after our own likeness. Matthew, I believe I read the 19th chapter, 18, um, Matthew 18 and 18. Truly, I tell you, whatsoever you bind on earth, it'll be bound in heaven. And we know how that goes. If it's bound in heaven, it's bound, if it's bound up in heaven, we can bind it here on earth. If it's loose in heaven, we can loose it here on earth. Christ built uh, his church upon truth. That was the key. Who will Jesus use to build his church? Now, only Jesus can build his church. Who are those ones that Jesus will use to make up his church? Those who are in his image, all that have uh, defined or that um, is built up on truth, the identity of Christ, who can stand on his revelation, one who communicates God's plan, one who is willing to use the key that the keys that only have come from heaven. And that's one of the things you have to know that these keys are from heaven. You just can't use any key. It says, the question was asked, <coughs> excuse me, the question was asked, how have you changed after listening to maybe one, two, or maybe more of these um, messages? And with me, I can say that the Holy Spirit is, has, I have decreased and allowed the Holy Spirit to increase in my life. My prayer life has increased. Um, my listening 
has it increased? And what's more important, hearing. Uh, whereas I used to have that saying, I should have followed my first mind. Now, that's not one of my sayings. I'm listening more to hear what the Holy Spirit has to tell me about the kingdom of God. I'm uh, watching less TV, less radio, using less phone at this present time. In my prayer life, I'm praying more for the mountains of society in Jesus' name. Now, sometimes we can see, we have to be, let me just talk about myself. Sometimes I have to be honest with myself. When my prayer life slackens, then I can see more things going haywire. It's not that I'm in control, but I can see um, when God is moving. And I have to put on the whole armor of God that keeps me doing the will of God in his kingdom. I must keep the mind of Christ. I must look at how Christ followed God so I may follow after the Holy Spirit who is doing the things of Christ. Uh, Ephesians 6, 11 through 18 speaks about having on the whole armor of God. And before I end, I want to say that the church of Christ, he built the church up, his church. I'm not talking about the one that um, we or I have tried to build. I'll just say I, whether I did it or not, I'll just say I. But the ch church that God has built, he's looking for one to be built up on the rock and that um, knows that the gates of hell cannot prevail. One that is in his image, the image and after his likeness, one that will know the keys which comes from heaven. One that prays uh, Matthew's 19 to bind and loose here on earth as it has been bound and loose in heaven, one that talks about the things of God's plan, one that knows their purpose of the kingdom, one that stands up for God's revelation or Christ in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for a day I've never seen before. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for choosing me, Heavenly Father. I'm praying, Heavenly Father, over the mountains of society. I'm praying against, Heavenly Father, the mystery of Babylon. I'm praying, Heavenly Father, to always know the keys that comes to me, that they're from heaven. And if they're not Heavenly Father, that I will not use them, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, your keys have already been prepared, prepared to be used for a special purpose, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, I pray over the children of the world, Heavenly Father. I pray over the teachers of the world, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, they're the first ones, Heavenly Father, well, not the first ones, but they're the main ones that be over our children, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, I expose those things that's not like you, Heavenly Father. I pray over the saints, Heavenly Father, that has over the whole armor and those that try to come against them, Lord. Praying for the world, Heavenly Father, that they know more of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your love, Father. We thank you for your grace, Lord God. We thank you for your mercy. And we never take you for granted, Lord God. In Jesus' name. Amen.
things that have stuck out to me in the past two months or beyond from two months from now, when um, Prophet Deborah, uh, when you spoke on the Holy Spirit in a witness and teacher, it really touched me because you told us when we have the Holy Spirit, you will have direct access to the truth right. by spending time with the Holy Spirit. Yes. You, you do, excuse me, y'all do know we need direct access. Yes. Amen. Long ago, before I knew any better, I would say something told me this, <laughs> something told me that. Didn't know that it was, I didn't know it was the Holy Spirit. And I did acknowledge that it was the Holy Spirit. But now that I know better, I acknowledge the Holy Spirit because when I found out and I know better, I do better. Amen. That's what I'm and my husband saying. When you know better, you do better. <laughs> the Holy Spirit gives you godly thoughts. The Holy Spirit will have you make the right choices and decisions. The Holy Spirit is a protector. I'm sure most of us had experience when the Holy Spirit said, don't go this way, don't go that way, don't do this and don't do that. Sometimes we'll listen, sometimes we won't. But when we do, we'll be like, oh, thank you, Lord. Right. Thank you, yeah. Father. Thank you for keeping me. Thank you for protecting me from not going that way or doing that thing. Sometimes we'll take different routes and we don't know why. You know, why am I going this way, Lord? I don't usually go this way. Let the Lord be your GPS. Amen. Let the Lord be your GPS. He will take you to the quickest route you probably haven't even known about. Uh, he'll give you the quickest decision. Like, you know what? That's right. I'm going to do this this way. I'm not going to do this that way. And you find out that the Lord was with you all the time. Amen. He is our GPS. It's, it's true. When we spend time with the Holy Spirit, he would teach us and give us discernment for all our comings and goings of, of our daily lives. Uh, when one speak with about apostle, when he spoke about building the church of Christ, he said, what is the purpose of the church of Jesus Christ? To be the custodian of the divine revelation of Christ, have the keys of the kingdom of heaven, the embassy of God's kingdom, and one of the institutions on earth against which the gates of Hades cannot prevail. He went to Matthew 7, 24, 27, entitled Visionary Analogy. Those for who for any reason, do not hear the words of Jesus are not of equation. They are not building at all. Wow, they're not building. They are not hearing, so they can't build because they don't want to hear the words or the voice of Jesus. But for those who hear the words of Jesus for some reason, choose not to follow the path by building on sand. They will collapse. Somebody say collapse. collapse. <laughs> but those who choose, they choose, choose to follow the words of Jesus are building on a sure foundation. They will pass the test. Say pass the test. Pass the test. For structural integrity. Right. They will be strong as a rock. A roof, how do we know if you get a roof on your house, it should last at least 10 to 20 years, right? right? Yeah. The rain will come and test your roof. The devil will come and test your, your roof, that's your covering. The floods will come from beneath the gates of Hades. The devil will test your foundation. Are your, is your foundation strong? Are you rooted in the Lord? Do you have any cracks? Do you need any crack filler? <laughs> Do you need that hydraulic cement to, to, to strengthen you? The winds test the walls and pillars. Can you stand? Are you loose? Are you swaying back and forth? Are you are you squeaking in the, in the winds? Are you strong enough to handle the things the adversary throws towards you? How many know that the Holy Spirit uh, it's used, I should say, the Bible is used a lot in Hollywood. 
scientific movies, mm -hmm. uh, books, yeah. children books, yeah. movies. It, it, it's, in, it's in there, it's out there, but they don't want to acknowledge yeah. where he got it from. Mm -hmm. But yet they say the Bible is not real. <laughs> Do you guys remember the children's book, Three Little Pigs? <laughs> the three little pigs got tested. Yes. But we're going to say it was three little baby Christians <laughs> got tested by the big bad wolf, which is the devil. Yep. So one little baby Christian built his house on sand. Oh. The, the wolf laughs. He's like, yeah, right. Okay. I'll huff and I'll puff. And I'll blow your house down. Mm. He blowed his house down, y'all. Wow. So he ran to the, the next baby little Christian, mm -hmm. which he had a house, I believe was his straw. Oh. <laughs> so he huffed and he puffed and said, I'll blow your house down too. This ain't nothing for me. I'm strong. I'm strong. I got this. I'm going to blow that down too. So while the other two little baby, they, they run into little baby Christians, oh my God, what are we going to do? Speaking in tongues, Lord, give us strength. <laughs> Father, help us. Lord, come into our heart. Send the sinner's prayer. Lord, forgive us for all that we did. We sorry we didn't listen to you, Lord. They ran to the house of stone. Hallelujah. And guess what that house of stone was, y'all? Mm -hmm. The king's court. <laughs> They found them. Guess who they guess what they found when they ran to the house of stone? They found the prophet Francis. They found three prophets. They found ministers and teachers. He said, okay. I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow the house down too. Guess what, y'all? He couldn't. Why he couldn't, y'all? Because that roof was strong. Yes. That roof was praying. Yes. That roof had that leaning there. They had they had praying going on. Yes. The foundation handled the flood. Yes. They was rooted in Jesus Christ. Yes. The Holy Spirit was all in the place. Yes. The winds came yes. and the pillars were strong yes. because of the true word of God. Mm. Kingdom ministry, oh. teaching of God's word was not at kindergarten level. Oh. People was praying. They was dancing and shouting. They was taking communion. They was everybody was speaking in tongues. They was having worship service, and he got confused. So he was like, "I can't, I can't, I can't blow this down. This is strong. This is kingdom ministry. I, I, I gotta flee. I gotta go." So that's right. So when the adversary saw, he gave up. Mm. And like one apostle once said, in so many words, he said, the devil will never stop testing you. Yeah. But for the time he does, praise the Lord for that. Because mm. he will always test your faith mm. in the Lord. Mm. Thank you in Jesus' name. Mm. So stay rooted. Yeah. I'm not adding it. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Wow, that was funny. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your presence here in the midst of us. Thank you for your goodness, God, your mercies, yes. your kindness, your grace, your, your love and sweetness. Father, we thank you. Father, God, I just want to thank you for bringing our, 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 our leaders back safely from Africa. Let's give God a hand clap yes. for that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, we just bless you, Father. We thank you yes. for being in the midst of us, God. I pray, Lord, that you would give me uh, just a, a speaking grace, speak your speaking anointing, God. Lord, I, I thank you for all the things that we've learned here, God. And God, we just thank you, Father. I just want to pray uh, 
Colossians 2 and 2. One thing I learned about, one, one thing this ministry does is inspire, inspire is praying the scriptures. So I, I, I seek to, uh, you know, I seek to always learn, try to memorize those prayer scriptures. So uh, I just want to pray uh, Colossians 2, 2 and 3. And Father, I just pray right now, Lord, that you would encourage our hearts, God. Even as we attain to all the riches of, uh, uh, attaining to all the riches of the full assurance of understanding to the knowledge of the mystery of God. Yes, God. Yes. Both of the Father yes. and of Christ in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And one thing I, I did, we, I do learn from this ministry is to pray the word of God. Amen. So I always seek uh, to memorize. When I, when I come across those prayers in the word of God, I seek uh, to, to try to memorize one. In any case, uh, I'm, I'm coming from Matthew 16, of course. And, 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 and my type, I'm, mine, my, 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 uh, mine is also entitled Keys of the Kingdom. Building the Church of Christ. Amen. I'll be reading from the Amplified Classic. And Jesus said, and I tell you, you are Peter. The Greek word Petros, a large rock. And Jesus said, and on this rock, yes. that statement he made, that thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Upon this rock, Greek word Petra, a huge rock like Gibraltar. The rock of Gibraltar is a giant monolith limestone promontory located in the British territory of Gibraltar near the southwestern tip of Europe on the Liberian Peninsula and near to the Mediterranean. The elevation is 1,398 feet high. The name Gibraltar actually stems in Arabic, the world. Listen to that. It's also, uh, the word is Jabal or Jabal, which, which also means mountain. That revelation was the rock, the foundation, the world, the mountain of all mountains That's right. that revelation was the rock the foundation upon which jesus said i will build my church yes. and the gates of haiti the powers of the infernal region shall not overpower it or be strong to its detriment or hold out against it verse 19 he says i will give you the keys of the kingdom. And what, one thing we learned from Apostle Francis is we have to seek those keys, those from Jesus himself. But he said, I will. And he emphasized that to us, that if we want keys, if we want understanding of the kingdom of God, we must seek Christ for ourselves. Yes. I will give you the keys of the kingdom and have, of heaven and whatever you bind declared to be improper and unlawful on earth must be what is already bound in heaven. Yes. And whatever you lose, declare lawful on earth must be what is already loosed in heaven, declare lawful. Now going back to the conference, when, when Apostle Francis said this particular statement, this one really, uh, really, really uh, touched my heart because he's, I mean, this is a strong statement. He said, no significant spiritual impact can be made by a local church that pleases God until it acknowledges and walks in the reality of Matthew 16, 18 and 19. That's a powerful statement. Jesus said, I will give you the keys of heaven, power and authority to exercise and express the will and purpose of heaven on earth. For an example, a police officer has been given authority on behalf of a city, a county, state, or federal province to bind or loose, to, to bind, declare unlawful what has been written into law. That's right. And, and, and actually bind you in handcuffs and arrest you if you break the law. That's right. 
That's right. Mm -hmm. He, he also has authority to let you go free when, when the Justice Department gives an order of release. Am, am I right, Prof? <laughs> it, it's not lawful for an officer of the law to act on his own behalf, mm -hmm. but only on the behalf of that province within their boundaries. And as an officer of the law, he is held to a higher standard. That's right. Can I get a witness? Yes. Apostle Francis puts it like this. We as the church of Jesus Christ are called to be the custodian of the divine revelation of Christ and of the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And we must receive those keys and dispense those keys throughout the earth accordingly. You know, as I meditated, prayed and saw deeper insight to these keys, which we learn here, we must see God for ourselves. We must see God for understanding, for insight, for revelation. We must ask the Holy Spirit himself to, to uh, let the uh, eyes of our understanding be enlightened that we might understand the hope that we, which we've been called. Can I get a witness? Yes. Have we learned that in this house? Yep. Are we doing that? Well, we heard my wife, I, I heard us say that some of us hear the word of God. But if we hear the word of God and we're not doing what the word of God is saying, we're not building. Yeah. Can, can I get a witness? I'm talking about us, even us. Right. Because in this house, we are getting the word of God. Lord, have yeah. mercy. And I tell you, I, what, one thing I've seen, I, I know I only got a few minutes, but one thing I understand, these, our leaders are growing. I just, I'm watching them grow from one level of glory to another. I don't want to get left behind. I'm going to encourage Amen. the rest of us. Don't, don't let us get left behind because they are moving. I had to throw that in there. <laughs> now, where, where was I? Meditating. <laughs> As I meditated, prayed and saw deeper insight to these keys, like in Luke 6, 47 and 48, Jesus said, whoever comes to me and hears my saying. And, and you know that, that word hear, that word here goes beyond the, the ears. It goes beyond the ears. I, I remember my mom when, when, when she would come home and she would tell my sister, uh, you didn't wash those dishes. Why are those dishes still dirty? And she would say something like this, you must did hear me. <laughs> you must did. I, 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 let, me, let, let me move. <laughs> Jesus said, whoever comes to me and hears my saying, I will show you whom he is like. Mm -hmm. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. Amen. Now, some, like I said before, some, some people uh, come to this house and, and I've talked to people that said, man, y'all just too deep. <laughs> I'm looking at what Jesus said. He yeah. said, those that hear his word, I'm going to dig deep. Yeah. So if you're not digging deep, you ain't hearing Jesus. That's right. That's right. First Corinthians 10 says that, 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 that eyes that have not seen, ears have not heard, yeah. nor, nor has it even entered to the heart of many things. That, that, ah, but it said, but these things God has revealed to us by his spirit. Yeah. For the spirit searches all things, even the deep things. Hi, yeah. 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 And for the second time, I better go. I better move on. Second time, I have a, a couple of keys from heaven to dispense on earth to build his church. Now, number one, the number one key that, that has been given to us is the Holy Spirit. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Because the Holy Spirit has keys within himself, the gifts of the spirit, dreams and visions that he might share with us, that, he, that, that we might fulfill uh, kingdom uh, mandates. Uh, John, uh, John 14, Acts 2, 1 Corinthians 12, so forth. Now in 10, uh, Acts 2, uh, Acts, uh, in Acts 10, Peter received a vision concerning the gospel to the Gentiles. Now, now, now Peter, Peter was just hungry. I gotta move fast. But, but 
but the Holy Spirit gave him a vision concerning the Gentiles. That was keys he received. Yeah. Now, he wasn't looking for the keys, but the key, he was, but but keys he had received keys to a vision. Let me let, let me move quickly. Uh, I just want to go quickly to this conflict that they had in the church concerning uh, the Gentiles and circumcision. And this was in Acts chapter 15. Uh, you had Judaizers uh, chasing down the Gentiles saying that they must be circumcised in order to be saved. Now the church, now this became an issue in the church. Do the Gentiles need to be circumcised? So what happens is the apostles got together and this, and this, and this, this was the conclusion because I knew I got to go. And and this is in Acts 15, verse 28 and 29. And, and, and this was the revelation. This was the keys that they received from heaven. It said, for it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us not to lay upon you no greater burden than, the, than, than these necessary things that you abstain from food offered to idols, from consuming blood or meat strangled uh, animals, and from sexual immorality. Passing translation said, then you will be beautiful believers if you keep your soul from these things and you will be true and faithful to our Lord Jesus. May God bless you. He was given from heaven to the Holy Spirit, to the apostles to loose yeah. the Gentiles yeah. from this requirement yeah. and declare unlawful to bind them, wow. which gave them gave boldness to the apostle Paul to say to the Galatians, stand fast. Therefore, the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and be not bewitched, be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And, and, and I just want to go uh, 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 close with Romans 8 2. And, and this may be a few, few months ago. And, it's, and, and Paul said, For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free yes. from the law of sin. Thank you, God. Thank you for your love, your mercy, and your grace. I pray that the youth eyes will be open and see the truth and your purpose and plan you have for their life and gain understanding. Amen. 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 Building the church of Christ. The church is built by the word of God. Mm -hmm. Something that stood out to me was any seeming process made a defiance to God's revealed course of action is progress in the wrong direction. Defiance is open resistance and bold disobedience. Mm -hmm. Defiance can come from many things. For example, when you try to go off what you think instead of trusting God's word. Uh, this is defiance and it causes you to move away from the plan of God. The plan that God has for the church. If the church is in defiance and not following God's word, mm -hmm. but, the, but the church can cause the youth to also move in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. It's important that the younger generation to understand that we have a purpose to fulfill according to God's word. That's right. I pray that the youth and the church won't be in defiance. I pray that we will be surrounded by God's people so we can fulfill the purpose you have for our lives. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank Hallelujah. You, Lord. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for who you are. We thank you, Lord, for this day, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity. I thank you, Lord for touching my heart, Lord God, that I would, you know, get up and stand before you and allow the Holy Spirit to speak, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. So that's God. Hallelujah. Building the church of Christ. I couldn't sit there. You, you know, I, I didn't remember him telling us for sure this week, but 
after different ones got up there, I just could not sit there and not say anything. And as um, Pastor had gone for, Pastor Harvey had said that we have gotten so much teaching in this house that we cannot just stand by and not say anything. And, and it's not just been teaching. The teaching has been anointed, anointed teaching. And so we cannot just stand by and not speak in reference to what God has called us to do. But that word building, that's a key word. Um, first of all, in Matthew 7, 24 and 25, um, Jesus said, whosoever do the sayings of mine and do them and will be like a man that builds his house on, on a rock. And to do that building, that means that you're not going to build on what you think the word of God is saying. You're not going to build on what somebody else thinks the word of God is saying. God has laid a roadmap out for us. He's made it plain for us. And he's put teachings before us. And he expects us to go forth and operate in those teachings. And to build, he expects us to labor. He wants us to co-labor with him. And when you co-labor with the Lord, you got to put forth some, uh, some effort. There's some action taking place. That means that we, the action is taking place in studying his word. I, the action is taking place by coming before him in his presence. The action is taking place by as he give us revelation, we revealing that revelation to other people, whether it be our family members, whether it be at work, at church, or wherever we go. We are to stand. And we are supposed to be his ambassadors because the church, we are the church. And Christ, he is the architect of that church. And he is the one that he's called us for. He's chosen. What the, the word of God said, many are called, but few are chosen. And so far as us being the body of Christ, the body of believers, and God has chosen us as his disciples. And he's granted us, uh, um, he's given us revelation. And so we can't take that lightly. So I, I couldn't just sit there and not say anything. And we know the purpose of the church. We, like I said, all of the teaching, and I know 10 minutes, we're not going to be able to hit all the teaching that we have gotten. But we have gotten teaching enough to stand, to go forth and, and speak on behalf of Jesus himself. And we know in this house, many times we... Uh, Pastor, uh, prophet, they've talked about, you know, the kingdom of God. We, we talked about that we're supposed to preach the kingdom. We're not supposed to, uh, many churches have preached about revelation. I, I won't say revelation. They've preached about money and these kind of things. And that has been their main focus. But they have gotten out of the part of preaching about Christ. And, and like Pastor, there are many times he talked about uh, there being a derailment in the church and that the derailment that has caused, that have come forth, we got to get back on track with who Jesus is and what he has already laid out. If we already, uh, he's our foundation and he's laid our blueprint for us to follow, those things we need to obey as far as the keys of heaven that he's given us. I mean, the key is, we, like, I think someone, I believe it was uh, Minister Cassandra got to talk about, it's not like regular keys or whatever. These keys got power and authority to help us stand. These keys that we, uh, he's given us, well, when we think we can't do something, when we think we can't stand, when we think we can't overcome, as far as us reading the word, standing on the word, operate in what he's given us, meditating on the word of God. We gain strength. Now, this is one thing I can say. I have gone through some stuff just like many have gone through some stuff. But the revelation of God's word that's coming forth as he tells us we can do all things through Christ will strengthen us. 
I was able to still stand. I went through it. I'm not saying I was always up here, but I went through it because of his word, standing on what he told me to do. And I and forever, for those uh, uh, that are young babes in the uh, Lord, how God tells us that with him, with Christ, everything is possible. But as far as the strength that we gain, that you know that you can do it, you can succeed. We can't just always think we can do it in our own strength. Many think that, that we're going to do it in our own strength. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. But the goal of Christ is to make his church. And even though he, Christ is the architect and he's starting to build it by the church being derailed, we got to get back on track. There's some new building, but the foundation, we're going to take his word to do it. We're going to take his word to, uh, to go forth and, and to build. Him being, we are the custodian. He has set things in line for us. So then we got to take the blueprint. We can't go take uh, John Doe blueprint, uh, apostle so-and-so blueprint. We're going to have to take it and, and stand. In Matthew 7, 25, the, the house. It talks about the uh, the rain descended and the floods came and the wind blew and, and beat upon the house and it fell not for it was built on the rock. And we know the rock is Jesus. It, it's the revelation of who Jesus is. You know, not the revelation on oh, this my church and my church is growing and my church got how many members or whatever, but it's the revelation of who Jesus is. And we know the word said a lot of people get away from, you know, him being the center focus, the center uh, foundation, the center way, the truth. He said in, in, um, in um, John 14, 6, that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father but by me. And, and, so if you're trying to go another way, you're trying to go through your money, you're trying to go through your deeds, you're trying to go through your work, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Jesus is going to have to be there. You got to meditate because we don't come before him. We can't hear uh, what he's saying. We can't hear, you know, which way we need to go next. We have to be able to do that. Um, the first identity is to make our relationship with him not in a man and our pastor or whoever to make it with him to seek him for the things that we need to do the uh we want to be followers of him that's what disciples are they are followers of christ we're students we are learners um and we need to do that again his foundation we got pastors always say we got to get the right ingredients and we need the right ingredients, and that is standing, reading his word, not only reading, but we got to meditate on it. And that this is something that he had to, uh, 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 the Lord, even though I knew that, you know, and you know how sometimes with cares and stuff of the world, but we, I got to get back focused. And that song that was played, uh, the, the, the song is re, uh, re-surrendering. I was like, oh, that was wow. hitting home. That was hitting home. Because, you know, there are certain areas of our lives we sometimes we take up stuff and we weren't, we're not supposed to take that up. We got to give that back to the Lord and let God keep doing what he's doing because we, we can't do it like he does it. We, we cannot do that. You know, following the, the, the blueprint. And um, so whenever we're building you know, we build on his foundation. We are going to be tested. But know that he said that he will never leave us, nor will he forsake us. But even though he said those things, when he said not forsake us, that means that if you believe me, you trust me, I'm going to give you what you need. You're going to be able to do this. I don't care how young you are. Just like uh, uh, Jordan got up here and spoke. He can use anybody. He can use that baby right there. It doesn't matter your age or whoever you are, but we have to remember to learn the will, our, our, our determination, our level of authority 
it comes from, you know, us learning who Christ is. It, it comes from us using and applying that word in our lives. And so I just want to, um, I just thank God. I mean, it was many, much more that I can say, but I know we only, we limited to a certain amount of time. But I can say this too. I'm grateful I'm in this house. Amen. I am. I'm grateful I'm here. And I'm grateful for the word. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we just thank you for this day, God. We thank you for the words that went forth that came out of your mouth, God. Lord, we receive it, we receive it, we receive it. Every word that you say, God. Lord, as we come before you on today, God, I ask, oh God, that you would just have your way, God. We thank you, God, that, that hallelujah, your word is truth, God. We thank you that you are the church, God. Lord, we just give you praise, honor, and glory for what you're doing inside this house, God. We thank you, oh God, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, the title that I have for the review is Revival of the Flatline Church. Revival of the Flatline Church. And when we think about church, a lot of people have their own definition for church. Some people think of church as an organization, as a membership, as a place to meet and greet, as a hotel or gathering, as a place where they just meet new people, as their religion um, is where some people think of it as where they meet God or even learn of God and even receiving spiritual guidance. There's a lot of different definitions to the way people see, because the way you see it is the way you're going to respond to you. And that's how your life is going to be led by what you believe. So in, I'm going to say in our mind, let us think on what we think church is. How do you feel when you miss church? Do you feel like you miss God? Do you feel like, you know, you're not going to survive that week? How do you feel? Another thing is that as the, the pastor has the ability, the ability to help people change and to help people live the life that Christ wants us to live, live the life that we're supposed to live on the earth. And, but what is the pastor? How do the pastor look at the people? Do they look at the people? Do we look at the people as people that can help us financially if we get a lot of people in the church? Do they look at the people as these are God's people? They need to learn who they are, you know, what God has for them, who God is. The pastor have a, an ability to help the people, but the church also, the people in the church, what are they coming to church for? They have the, they, if you come into the right church, you have the ability to change. How do you see the pastor? What's in your heart? Do you see him as God? Do you see him, you know, as your savior, what are you looking at when you see the pastor? Do you see God through the pastor? Do you see God using the pastor? Do you hear the voice of God through the pastor? That's something that you have to evaluate within yourself to know that this is God. This is where you belong. This is, you can hear from God. You can change. You want to change. You want God. You want to do the things that God wants you to do to move forward in life and be who he wanted you to be to do the things that, that he, the works that he did, greater works. Okay, so then when the pastor and the leader, you know, look for the congregation, what do they see? They should see people who need God, people who want to change, people, you know, that God want God to use them to speak to the people. Now, when we come down to the flatline church, the flat the church needs revival. It has flatline because it went away from that which God wanted the direction that God wants it to be. It actually, a lot of churches are just bad, especially people say it's the pandemic, uh, they church can't live, but our church been going for a long time through a pandemic. So whatever the situation is, even if the pandemic affected you and we had to close the church and then, but when it was time to open, did you see God? What's, what's holding you back from bringing forth 
you know, the church again, bringing forth that which God was using you to impart inside of people to bless people. You are the church. Is that gone as well? Did that flatline? Did that that? Not only did the church that, but did that pastor that? Did what? What is going on? What flatline in the church? And we realized that if it did, that has to be a revival. When something has flatlined, the first thing you generally say is, "Ask is what happened." You know, when doctors come to you with someone from flatline, be like, "What? Well, what happened? Why did it? And why did it happen?" What happened to the church? Why did these churches flatline? Well, it was the derailment. The church was, it was derailed. Derailment is the obstruction of a process by diverting it from its intended course. You went, you know, a lot of churches went a different course. They weren't going the course that it was supposed to go, that, that we supposed to be on as far as how the word says that we are the church. What did, why did it happen? We know that Jesus is the rock. Upon this rock, he said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The church was about everything. A lot of churches about everything except Jesus Christ. Yeah. There was about money, events, pastor, pope, leaders, teachers, the choir, having concerts and all other things. And sometimes it's, it's okay to have certain things but it still has to honor God. It still has to, you still have to worship God. It still, he has to be the head of it. It's not just a performance, not anything like that. We're kings and priests and they shall reign. We are the kings and priests that shall reign on the earth. The land, the land was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings. Revelation 11 one says, and there was given to me a reed like a rod, and unto a rod, and the angel stood saying, rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. The church, a lot of churches flatline because there is no electrical movement in their heart. When something flatlines, there's no electrical movement. There's a separation from the body and the spirit. And during that time, you have, it's five minutes before death comes. So you, if, a lot of times when you see them run into someone's room to try to um, revive them, they know that every second counts. The heart has stopped and there has been a separation and time is of the essence. It has to be within five minutes. And there would have to be something electrical to happen in order for both to come together again. Doctors usually shock person to bring them back. But you know, five is the number of grace. Prayer can be electrifying. God can bring them back to life. He can bring you and the church back to life through, you can pray, we can pray and bring back to life. And I can give you an example on, on, on something like that happened. I was sitting inside of a church um, with my mother and the guy in front of me, he just fell straight to the floor like he was having a heart attack he just you know was just out and all the ministers came and they stood there as he lay there and i came and just the holy spirit just led me to come over him and just begin to pray on him begin to speak in tongues and just begin to pray it was a warring prayer he got up off the floor walked to the front and said i want to join the church the Lord, he just said that he went to the hospital. I guess they said he was having a heart attack, but the Lord healed him. That was an instant healing that came upon him right then there. The Holy Spirit used me to do it. And I thank God because he gets the glory for it. So we have to become the church doing the works of Christ. Do you have a praying heart? Your heart to see if you flatline, because some people say, well, I ain't flatline. Well, how do you know you haven't flatlined? Do you have a praying heart? Is your heart praying? You're supposed to pray without ceasing. Do you reference God? And also I'm saying these questions to the church as well. If you have a church and your church is not praying, the Bible says pray without ceasing, you're in flatline mode. You're in something is wrong there. Do you reference God or do your church reference God? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and with all your mind. He is your maker. Therefore, Hebrews 12, 28 said, therefore, since we received a kingdom which cannot be shaken, 
Let us show gratitude by which we may offer to God an acceptable service and reference and all. Do you worship God? Do you worship God? Do your church worship God? Luke 4 and 8 said, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and only him shall you serve. So if you're not doing this, your church is on flatline mode, whether it's you or the, the body that comes together in the church. Do you read his word and follow it? Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, shame, rightly dividing the word of truth. You have to speak the word. You can't just come to church and just speak about your life, how God going to bless people with money and what what we need to do as far as to achieve more money and like that and leave just leave God totally out the picture evaluate the message that you're sending out because we are accountable for what we say and what we do do you hear the voice of God or is you hearing from God that's a question that do you really hear from God how then shall you they call on him whom they have not believed and how should they believe in him whom they have not heard and how should they hear without a preacher the preacher got to hear from God in order for to instruct them on the ways of God. Who are you hearing from? You got to hear from God. The life of God comes through Jesus Christ. And how to fix the problem? It can be material. It can be a, a, a human work. It must be fixed by, the church must be fixed by being in the image and the likeness of God. The church is to call down ones to learn of Christ, the eternal life, and practice that life on earth. Prayer is the key. We also learned that while you are in your time of grace, you flatline church must pray. Pray is electrifying prayer. Prayer and electrifying prayer that would bring you back to life. So don't go just, if you want to live, what kind of prayer would that be? If someone told you right now, live or die, you know, you have one prayer. What kind of prayer would that be? Would that be just, um, Lord, thank you. And um, um, I just need more money. You wouldn't even talk about money. You wouldn't even talk about a lot of the things that you talk about, that people talk about in church that you may hear. If this was your lifeline, some people come to church and it'd be their last day. If you, if the pastor knew that somebody in there was going to be their last day, how would that message sound? What would you say? Will you really be trying to hear from God? Will you be trying to make sure everything is straight with the people? This is the mindset on every Sunday, how it should be. This is the mindset on how you live your life, even as you go to work. You don't know if you're going to see those people again. You don't know about family or anything, but we have to live the life. We have to walk the walk and talk the talk of Jesus Christ or how he lived, how he died. We have to be the examples before the people. And according to Romans 12 and 1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God to present yourself a living sacrifice unto God for, you know, a holy acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That's just a reasonable service that we have to do to him. And also Ephesians 2, 4 to 6 says, but God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sin, had quickened us together with Christ by grace ye are saved and have raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So this is the life we have to live. If you have flatline, your church has flatline, it's time to be revived by the prayer, electrifying prayer that would bring you back to life while you are in grace. Grace five is the number of grace. While you are in grace, allow God to restore you, to electrify you that you may come back to life. May your church live, grow in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you, Father. Hallelujah, for we are the church, God. We thank you for the, the people that come together to ask the church, God. Lord, we ask, oh God, that you would continue to breathe your word upon them. Lord, we pray life into our bodies, God, the life of Christ, God. Lord, let, hallelujah, your life, oh God, Hallelujah, shine bigger than us, God. Let your life, oh God, be shown and demonstrated through us, God. Lord, we pray for the bodies of Christ, those that are flatlined, those that are died, God. Hallelujah, they need to be resurrected, God. Lord, your people need to hear from you, God. They need to know that you live, God, and that you died for our sins, Jesus. Lord, 
Lord, we pray, oh God, that your resurrection power, oh God, will bring them back to life again, God. Lord, and Father, we pray even, oh God, that the youth will not be deceived, God, in this hour, God. We pray your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven, God. Lord, we want to live, God. We want your word to live, God. We want your people to live, God. Lord, we don't want to live a selfish life, God. Lord, so we pray, oh God, that we will live, God, that you may live in this earth, God, even the more, Lord, and we give you the praise, honor, and the glory, God. In Jesus' name, amen.